In this video, I will share a bunch of stuff that you can do to make the early game of Enshrouded a lot easier, but also a few things that you might have used for later on as well. When you start to play Enshrouded, the game guides you to build your base around here. Don't start by trying to build something that is big and good looking, because the game is very generous of giving you different crafting materials and recipes early on, so if you just wait a little bit, you can build something much better looking. Here's a starting base that you can make as early as like level 4 or 5, except for some of the flowers and plants outside. Uh, I have made a video guide about how to build this, you can find a link to that guide in the video description below. But you do want to build something right away, and the reason for that is the rested buff. Uh, and of course to be able to put the bed down so you can sleep through the night. So the rested buff works with warmth and comfort level. Comfort level you can increase by crafting stuff here at the bench, the stuff under comfort. So if we actually go in here and we stop placing stuff, here's a table I made. Uh, I made a bit of candles. If you check the rested buff now up in the corner, it actually goes up as I place stuff. Uh, so we can make that buff last a lot longer, which is beneficial to us. When talking about buffs, you should also make sure to use the food buffs available to you early on. Those are the three small circles up to the left. Uh, these berry bushes you get berries from, like this. You can also pick mushrooms. Oh, I picked a stone. Here's a mushroom. There are small rabbit-like creatures. Uh, they will run away if they spot you, but you can crouch to sneak up on them, and they will drop lean meat. Lean meat will provide plus one constitution when cooked. But a better source of meat than the lean meat is the wolf meat, and wolves don't run away when you approach them, because it gives plus two constitution if you cook it. We can cook it at the fireplace. Just hold. And then it gives plus two in constitution. A lot of foods change properties in a shrouded if you cook them. For example, the uncooked red mushroom gives plus one intelligence, but the grilled one gives plus two. There is also a well here in the long keep, just next to the base, and you can go and pick up water in the well. The water will provide endurance and stamina recharge. Lastly, there are quite a lot of beehives around the base that you can harvest for uh, honey. Honey is really great, especially when you want to cut down trees, because it gives plus 15 to stamina recharge, which is a lot, even though it only lasts for 3 minutes. Now you will be rested, which is great for stamina, plus have a bunch of other buffs running that will make the early game a lot easier. When you get your first skill points, don't try to put them in damage, because it scales so poorly early on. It's much better to put them in the sheep constitution over here for just one point, but especially try to get the double jump early, because it's really really useful in a lot of situations. And don't worry about choosing the wrong skills, it is extremely cheap to respect, you will get a lot of runes. You should also make sure to craft a bunch of bandages, because you will actually take quite a lot of damage from the enemies early on. You will loot torn cloth from a number of things, and it's easy to have enough plant fiber for a lot of strings, as long as you make it a habit to actually pick up the bushes that you run past. When talking about looting, it's a really good idea to smash objects you find in the world early on, because it will provide resources you need, like cloth and scrap metal. It's typically better to also hit them with an axe or a pickaxe uh, than with your sword, because that will deal a lot more damage to objects. It is also a good idea to craft the grappling hook and the glider very early on. Shroud wood you can find by cutting down trees down in the shroud, pretty much the first one you find. And you can usually get enough scrap metal by destroying especially barrels in long keep just next to the camp. One little trick that you will have used for throughout the whole game. Uh, let's see you end up very deep in the shroud and time is running out. Now, time is not running out, obviously, and we are not very deep in the shroud either. But let's say you are, uh, then there's a little trick to get you out of danger. Just quit to the main menu. Because here's the thing, you will not respawn where you left off. You will always respawn at your last visited flame shrine. So, that will always get you out of danger. At the very start of the game, even before you upgrade a flame level for the first time, you can create two active altars. You can teleport to any altar on the map whenever you want to. They are also very cheap to make. You can also extinguish them whenever you want if you want to place them somewhere else. This means that you always carry a teleportation device with you, so whenever you have full backpack and need to empty the backpack back at base before you continue your adventure, or you are about to do something potentially dangerous, like finding the first of the sleeping survivors, 
Just put down an altar and remove it again once you are done. Once you have rescued your first NPC, it is time to craft some armor. Uh, well, you can craft armor earlier, but it's not that good, so you might as well just wait for this one. If you have put, uh, like picked up a lot of bushes along the way, you should have enough plant fiber to make all the strings you need. As well as if you have smashed uh, like stuff along the way, you should have enough torn cloth as well. If you don't have enough animal fur. Now is the time to sneak up on all of those sheep running around the starting area, because they don't drop meat, but they do drop a lot of animal fur and bones. So let's just craft one of each. Quite soon after rescuing the blacksmith, like level 2 or 3, you probably want to unlock the ancient spire of Springlands, not only because of the amazing view, and that you can use it to quickly fly to a lot of new and interesting locations, but also for the loot inside. Like countless games have told us, smashing urns that you find in video games usually provide good loot, and the same goes for Enshrouded. You can actually find a lot of things in the urns that you can't craft yet at the point you get to the spire. Like some materials, but also potions that can be really useful, like health potions and potions that prolong the time you can spend in the shroud. And best of all, every time the world is reset, so that if you play single player, that would be every time you exit to the main menu and enter the game again, you can loot the tower again. Just teleport there, Go down to the start, go up again, and all the urns will have spawned back, ready to be looted again. The game quite quickly directs you towards your first elixir well. Down there is a boss, it's not too hard to deal with the boss since the attacks are quite easy to dodge. There is also a shroud root down there, and when you cut it down, you get skill points. What the game does not tell you is that there are other shroud roots, not in elixir wells, and that they also get skill points if you find them and cut them down. Close to the starting base, there is one over here, inside of a cave, and one up here, also inside of a cave you can enter from here, or kind of jump down here and fly inwards. However, you need to upgrade to flame level 2 to survive the shroud surrounding them. The last thing I want to show is not this corn field here. Corn is great, but it grows pretty much everywhere in the starting biome, and not only at the peaceful acres over here. Here's your starting base for reference, but something that is behind this house. Down here is salt. You will need a lot of salt quite soon, and this place is a lot easier to get to and mine salt from than the salt mine deep inside the shroud that the game directs you to later on. That was all my tips for when you first start out in a shrouded. What did you think about them? Let me know in the comment section below. Give a thumbs up if you liked the video, and you also might consider subscribing, because I have a lot of guides for Enshrouded, as well as Let's Build, where I talk about different building techniques if you want to make something that looks a lot better than the little shed I have behind me. Cheers.